Now, the next subject, and this is going to be a long subject, uh, best troops and troop tree discussions. And we're also going to be touching upon tech trees and tech stages because in Nova Ethos, there's a tech system introduced. And to do that, we are going to be going back on our Y character, on our test character, just because I'm going to be able to showcase the troop trees for each faction and show them on the map where they're at. To access the troop tree in-game, you go to Reports, Kingdom Reports, and View Faction Troop Trees. You can also see the technological overview over here, but everything is at Tech Stage 1, and I'm going to be explaining about each Tech Stage, what it provides after we go and visit those troop trees, okay? So, Kingdom Report, View Faction, Troop Trees. Okay, we're going to be starting off with the classics and how they're standing compared to native game. And then we're going to go through the new faction troop trees, okay? So, and let's start with everybody's favorite, the most OP broken motherfuckers in native, the Swadians. And sadly to say, that are not that OP in Nova Ethos. Even fully upgraded to Tech Stage 7, they are nowhere equal to the insanity that the Swadian Knights were in the vanilla game. So, what are their strengths and weaknesses? They still have um, some of the best mounted units in the game, at, from tech, tech Stage 1 all the way up to, to uh, Tech Stage 7, uh, but they're sadly the second best mounted units. The second best um, the people who are beating them to it are the Aegonic Order, which we're going to be talking a little bit later on. Um, so again, their strengths are their cavalry. Uh, this time they come around with heavy infantry, no halberdiers or stuff like that. They come around with heavy infantry, so they're a little bit better to form a shield wall. And they also come equipped with crossbowmen. So um, to compensate for the fact that their cavalry is a little bit weaker, they have crossbow ranger units so pretty fucking dangerous pretty fucking dangerous and i wouldn't name them the best all around balanced faction in a nova ethos i know i know chris yeah yeah i'm i'm kind of making a mistake with uh prophecy of Endor. my bad my badsies okay let's go further in Next up, we're going to be... Yeah, sure. We're going to be going with the Vagers. So their specializations still remain the same as a native. The Vagers have the best marksmen, the best archer units. And again, they have pretty high up there Vager, Vager mounted units. Uh, these are a little bit under the Swadian Knights. So practically the third or fourth best, depending on how you look towards the Serenids. Um, Vager Guard come equipped another sword and board. They also come equipped with two handers. So these are more shock troops. You're not going to be able to utilize them very well as shield, shield infantry. So a little bit of nerf from that perspective. You can't utilize the Vager Guard as a um, arrow soaker to defend the Vager Marksman. But a Vager Marksman still remains one of the best archers in the game. They have very, very high burst damage. They... Uh, the problem with them being they um, run out of ammo pretty quick, as you would expect. Okay, let's go to the Kurjit Khanate. Sadly, they're the same like in native. They're pretty weak. You can't really do too much with them. And no infantry this time. No infantry or archers. Everything is again mounted. Everything is again mounted. The Kurjit Veteran Horse Archer with the Kurjit Lancer. I do want to verify something real quick. Yeah, they can still level up. They can still level up and receive the um, the gunpowder units. So yes, at tech stage 3 and at tech stage st 6, you receive the gunpowder units. And even the Kyrgyz can receive them. But again, because you don't have um, that good infantry to protect them, they're, again, not that good. And I put them uh, the second weakest faction in Nova Ethos second weakest faction oh and just to give you guys a heads up the swadians are over here this time um they took tier so tier is no longer a nordic city from the beginning um and the vagiers are over here uh the difference being the nor they don't have rivacheg anymore rivacheg is now part of the kingdom of norger yes the weakest being the aztecs but we will talk with them 
about them a little bit later. Kurgits are over here. Um, the only difference being they don't have as many fiefs on this side because over here they've placed the Agonic Order from the beginning of the game. Okay, now let's go. And they're also going to be losing a few towns um, because of the Turgon Horde invasion a little bit later on. And the Sarenas will also be losing a few times because of that invasion, but we'll get there in a sec. Now, next troop tree that we need to talk about is the Nordic Union. So the Nordic Union is positioned um, to the south between the Swadians, Vajir, and the Kingdom of Norger. And this is the Christian counterpart of the Nords. Again, as you expect, they're specialized in infantry and Nordic veteran archers, but they're more like melee with ranged option always treat them as melee and ranged option i would say uh, make them infantry as well and put them inside the party of the nordic huskarls and then just charge everyone in and affect everybody's day up now um i'm gonna be i'm gonna be stating something very very uh, no very important but it's a little bit complicated in the early game, I hope I hope the next ones know. I, I'm gonna go to the Kingdom of Norger now, just to show you a parallel between the Kingdom of uh, Norger and the Nordic Union. I'm kind of annoyed that they didn't put the Nordic Union next to the Kingdom of Norger, but here they are. They have practically the same troop tree. Norger Huskarls with Norger veteran archers. The difference being is that the Norger soldiers outscale outscale or and are stronger than the nordic union counterparts by far they're stronger they're better in the early game keep that in mind in the early game the kingdom of norger have the best infantry in the early game now there's a big thing that's coming here into play kingdom of norger cannot upgrade their tech stage they cannot upgrade their tech stage, they're conservative, and they're stuck in their old ways. Thus, the infantry cannot scale with the bonuses received from the tech stage. The Nordic Union, on the other hand, will level up its tech stage. And in late game, because of those tech stage bonuses, the Nordic Huskarl will outscale and leave in the dust the Norgar Huskarl. Keep that in mind. Just because the tech stage bonuses will provide a whopping 8 to Iron Flesh. And I'm going to go more on this once we talk about each tech stage and what that provides for your kingdom and for other kingdoms. Okay, but always keep this in mind. Early game, the Kingdom of Norger are the best infantry, but as you reach late game, where all factions increase their tech stage, and yes, all factions and faction AI, do increase, which are capable, of course, will increase their tech stage in time. Nordic Union is no exception. Late game, the Nordic Union Huskarl will outscale the Norger Kingdom Huskarl. Keep this in mind. Okay, next up, Kingdom of Rodox. They're practically the same, the only difference being no longer they don't have spearmen. Actually, they do have spearmen um, in the Rodok Elite Spearmen, but then he becomes a sergeant and he's simply a sword and board. And they also have a noble knight. Um, he is, <clears throat> I think, on right under the Vajir mounted unit. The Vajir mounted unit. You practically use them because of their lances. And they still have the best crossbowmen in the game. So Rodox rules supreme in my book. I feel like Rodox are the best faction. Strongest faction, hands down. Hands down in Nova Ethos because of this. Okay, Serenid Sultanate. Now, the Serenids um, have an interesting tree this time. They still have the Serenid Mameluk, which is the, the third best mounted unit in Nova Ethos. Um, on the first being the Agonic Order, on the second place being the Swadians, and on third place being these guys. Uh, they come with Serenid Guard that do not equi come equipped with um, 
shields because these are simply shock oh actually no they, they don't come equipped with shields but again you, you practically use these guys as shock troops you use the guys on front line because there are no archers to defend only if you want to stop the serenid archers from leveling up into serenid camel archers and i kind of recommend against this because camels are pretty well armored and pretty strong so keep that in mind they're um I guess the best way I could describe the Cernet Sultanate, they're a stronger version of the Kurjit Khanate. Okay, now let's go to the Turgon Horde. Now, the Turgon Horde, and since we've talked about these guys, let me just mention, um, Nord the Kingdom of the Kingdom of Norgur is over here with Wurchig and Rivicheg, and the Nordic Union is over here with just Sargoth. And then to the southwest, we have the Rodok territories that they're um, kind of splitting them up with the Merchant Republic of Zendar and also the Kingdom of Swadia is a little bit to the south over here. So this is from level one. This is how the map looks from level one. And then the Serenids, besides their old territories from the vanilla game, they also have Hashala and to the south, Jerusalem. Now Jerusalem acts as a very important city because it's Jerusalem. Fun fact, Jerusalem in Jewish, in Judaism, in Jewish mean sorry, in Hebrew means Jerusalem. So this is the holy city that the papal state and all of the Christian factions and the Serenids will be fighting over, which we're going to be talking about later on. And now the Turgon Horde is over here. They're going to be invading the map some people say it's around day 70. Uh, some people say it's based on your character's level um, between 5 and 20, as I understand. People are kind of debating that on, on Facebook and, sorry, on the forums and on the internet and on Reddit. Uh, but once, usually by day 100, the Turgon Horde will invade. Uh, once they invade, they'll take Tolgar, Barry, and Ahmarad. And I, I'm not sure if they're also going to take uh, Narma, but I don't think so. Or it might be Barry, Ahmarad, and Narma. But something like that, they will usually take either two cities from the from the Kurgits and one city from the Serenids, or two cities from the Serenids or one from the Kurgits. And some people, uh, the game kind of fearfully tells you they take Narma too. Okay, cool. Then they might take Narma too. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but. The game says that the Turgon Horde will invade and conquer the entire world or stuff like that. They will usually just stick to those territories. They're not going to go beyond the Serenid and the Kurgit Khanate territories. I have never seen them go past those territories. And you can just kind of say that they're a stronger version of both factions. And we're going to get to their troop tree right now. Hello, Turgon Horde. They are... A stronger version of the Serenids and a stronger version of the Kurgids. They have Sabadar archers who come equipped with Turgon bows and some Turgon arrows. Nothing to scoff at. They're not that good. But then their Tarakand horse archers are pretty up there. I think these are the best mounted archers in the game. And the Khan lancers are not as strong as Swadian, but pretty decent it, it's they're practically a viable kurgit khanate faction that's that's all i'm gonna say about them they're a viable kurgit khanate faction okay um and then let's go oh sorry sorry did not want to exit that let's go further on to let me just see i think we jumped over the, yeah we jumped over the agonic order to the agonic order so for all of you dus Vult fans and crusader fans uh, this is your wet dream come true, I guess. These are your Egonic Order faction. These will be the first to raise up arms in taking Hiroshima if they so wish to. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive, D-Knight. We'll come back to the end. Uh, but again, the stats are not really not that good. And they, I think, have the strongest bows in the game. I'll have to check with the Vagers. But whatever. Let's go to the Egonic Order. These are, I, I guess I could say these are the Swadians from Native. These are the Swadians from Native, but just not that OP. Just not that OP. They have uh, Crossbowman, the Prusinian Sharpshooter, which is pretty decent. They're on par with Rodox and Swadians. 
and they have the Dindre Bruder, which comes equipped with a. This is practically a. Um, if you ever need fast mounted units, if you never need fast mounted units, you can you can opt to go into the Dindre Bruder. If not, and if you want the strongest mounted units in the game, you go with this guy and then just level them up into the Knight of Christ, who stands as the strongest mounted cavalry unit in Nova Ethos. They have terrifyingly, terrifyingly powerful warning stars, but the problem with them, once they lose their horse, they're atrocious in battle if they don't spawn with the Lorong Arming Sword. If they spawn with the Morning Star, they will practically get outscaled in speed by other infantry factions. So keep that in mind when you're charging them in on a siege battle. Okay? Just saying. Just saying. But they stand to be the strongest mounted unit in Nova Ethos right now out of all of their factions. Okay, let me go through... Yeah, the Merchant Republic of Zendar. Now, the Merchant Republic of Zendar is a small city, Zendar over here, which was part of the Rodox, but then they declared independence. They're the only faction that has a harbor, and they control the gate to the New World, and access to the Mithridian Empire on the Isles to the south. This Zendar is the only place where you can buy ships, and it's the only place for you to um, dock or undock at the beginning of the game. Okay, so what can I say about them? Uh, they're a weak faction. I'm going to say this, yes. They're a weak faction, and I'll tell you why. So, the Zendar Pikemen load up into swordsmen, and then they either become halberdiers or crossbowmen, and afterwards they become lancers. Can you see something missing from the pikemen, the swordsmen, and the halberdiers? Class, can you see anything missing from these soldiers? What do these soldiers lack? Okay, nobody's seeing anything, so I'm just going to say it outright. They don't have shields. They don't have shields. Good job, Chris. Good job. Indeed. They don't have shields. And thus, they are very, very, very weak against any, any faction that's focused on uh, crossbows or rangers or anything like that. The only soldiers that do come up with shields are crossbowmen, which will most likely not going to be utilizing them because they're going to be too busy to shoot. And the Zendar Lancer, who are simply too few in number to matter, especially in sieges. So, let's... Sadly, I need to be near... I need to be near Zendar to see the garrison. But the only thing that you have to worry when you attack Zendar and their fiefs is the number of their crossbowmen. And once you go through their crossbowmen, you can just kill all of them super easily. So, out of all of the factions, uh, Zendar is the easiest to attack... Now, let's go to the next faction. Um, easiest to attack in the old world. We're going to get to the others soon. Let me just go through all of them. The, the Papal State. The Papal State has the same problem as the Kingdom of Zendar. And the Papal State is inspired by the real, the real soldiers from the real world. So they have mostly... Pikemen, a few crossbowmen, and the Papal Lancer. Again, they do come equipped with a few shields, but they're not that strong. The only strong unit over here is the Geronian Guard, level 30, and they're incredibly, incredibly tanky, even though they don't have any shields. A lot of people like to take a big pile of Geronian Guards and just go to the New World and rake some havoc, fuck, fuck people up. Um, so for early game, if you have a few Geronian guards in your uh, shield wall, they're going to be killing mounted units like there's no business. So if you can get your hands on some Geronian guards, and you can actually get your hands on Geronian guards by um, going inside taverns. Uh, sorry, Gabi. Control space? Uh, you don't teleport, you just uh, forward time by control space. But no, I don't think I have cheats on. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right, guys. There's no need. There's no need, because I think you get the gist of it. Okay, and the people state is only over here. 
Al Durias. I recommend against attacking the papal state because a lot of the Christian factions will be maybe declaring war on you. Control click though. Um, nope, I don't have the cheats on. Don't have cheats on, but it's all right. It's all right. I recommend that you don't attack Al Durias from the beginning, but in late game, for example, in my playthrough right now, Al Durias is going to be the next target for me because Al Durias was the old capital of the Colretic Empire, which we're going to be going for. Because as you can see, I've created the old fabled Colretic Empire, and Al Durias is the last jewel on top of my crown. And I think after after the guide, I'm going to be doing just that and attacking Al Durias. Okay, um, going back to the Y character and back to the troop trees, the Mithridian Empire. Okay, so the Mithridian Empire is an isolate isolationist faction that's standing on these islands, these series of islands to the south. If you want to see how they look like, going to be showing better in my playthrough. There you go. I've explored these territories. They have Mithridios, and if you look at that scene, I think you can make some comparisons to something in Lord of the Rings. Am I right, boys? Okay. Uh, their troops are looking like this. Mithridian Lancers, Mithridian Imperial Guard, and Mithridian Crossbowmen. Nothing to scoff at. Uh, again, not... They have pretty weak lancers. Not, I think. I think these guys are on par with Rodok troops. Um, their strengths lie in the Imperial Guard and the Mithridian crossbowmen, and you can amass a big, big pile of them if you have enough cities. Usually, what they're gonna do is they're gonna take Hierosolima. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're gonna start uh, waging war against the Serenids and the Rodoks, and they end up taking Hierosolima most of the times. And once Hirosolima is taken, actually even even before Hirosolima is taken, usually the crusade mechanic is going to be hitting in. The crusade mechanic is going to be hitting in, but we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. Let's go back to this character, Kingdom Report, Troop Tree. Next up, I think the last faction that we need to talk about is the Aztec Empire from the New World. Okay, so the Aztec Empire is hands down the weakest faction in Nova Ethos. They are weaker than the Kurgids. They're weaker than the Kurgids. Uh, one of the main reasons being is that their shield is pretty pitiful and their strongest unit does not even come equipped with a shield. They're practically shock troops with a pole arm. Body armor is pretty decent, but in face of your superior soldiers and firepower, you're most likely going to be making slaves out of this faction and destroying them whatsoever. Also, these guys tickle. These guys just tickle. They're the weakest archers by far. Level 8 archers, weakest by far. And you practically fart in the general direction. And all said, the only effective unit that I've seen when I was battling them was the Jaguar Warrior and the Temple Guard, just because they come equipped with shields and they can sometimes with and they move fast, they run fast, and they can sometimes get into your infantry line and kill a few men. But that is it. I've conquered in my playthrough. I've conquered the New World with a hundred troops. I shit you not, let me show you, I've conquered the entirety of the Aztec Empire with a hundred troops, with just a hundred troops, everything was taken from them, Axakaban being their capital, Axakaban being their capital. Besides that, um, another difference um, another difference from other factions is their cities, they don't have taverns, and their marketplaces don't have gold. Um, thus, it's very, very hard for you to make food and to procure food and water 
in the new world but we're going to be getting to the new world a little bit later on right now let's focus on talking about troop trees discussions okay now let's do a rundown a top three of each type of unit rundown top three of each type of unit so let's go for uh, faction troop trees the best mounted unit you're going to be able to find in the agonic order the agonic order currently has the strongest mounted unit in the game in the unit named the knights of christ let me go find them and no that was not me saying christ where are they they're literally named knights of christ these are the strongest mounted units in the game on second place we have the swadians Nothing to scoff at still, the Swadian Knight is breaking heads. And on second place. On third place, we have kind of a tie. It's kind of a tie. It's the Vajir Boyar, or the Serenid Sultan and Mamluk, or Khan Lan... No, no, the Khan Lancer are weaker. What was the other one? I think the Mithridians. Nope, nope. So yeah, yeah. on third place, we have the Vajir mounted unit, and the Serenid mounted units, which are pretty, pretty fucking similar. That's it for mounted units. Then, best infantry. Best infantry, like the classics. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess the Boyars, the Vagers will be on fourth place. Will be on fourth place. You are right. You are correct, Chris. That is true. If they don't spawn with a shield, they're gonna be shitty. Hello, Montanalas. Welcome back again, man. Doing a guide for Novathus right now. So, best infantry. Early game on first place. This is going to be divided into early game and late game. Early game on first place, we have the Kingdom of Norger with their Norger Huskarls. Hands down, these are the strongest infantry troops in the early game. They will wreck your shit up, fam. On the second place, I have to mention the Papal State with their... Uh, Halibadiers, the Geronian Guard. This is on second place. They're pretty fucking strong. Even though they don't come equipped with shields, I don't say this often, they're very fast on their feet and they co uh, compensate for the lack of shield with a very, very good chest piece armor of 63 to body armor. These guys are great to go inside your army and mingle between your Huskarls. Just for that extra mounted unit firepower. Okay. On third place, I'm gonna say the Nordic Union Infantry. Nordic Union Huskarl. Still, even though they're not as strong as the um, Kingdom of Norger Huskarl, they're nothing to scoff at in the early game and they will fuck your shit up. Now, late game, things switch around a little bit. Um, first place goes on third place and third place goes on first place. What do I mean by that? Uh, because the Kingdom of Norger cannot upgrade their tech stage, their tech stage, uh, the Norger Huskar will not be able to scale into the late game, thus his stats will always remain what you can see here. But the Nordic Union Infantry, Nordic Huskars, can upgrade their tech stage, and the Nordic Huskar will receive bonus to Iron Flesh, to Power Strike, and to Agility from Tech Stage upgrades, thus outscaling the, the uh, Norger Huskarls. These boys are the strongest infantry unit in the late game. On second place, the Geronian Guard remains on second place just because they can increase their Tech Stage as well. And actually, let me verify that. Let me verify that. I don't want to talk shit here. No, the Papal State does not receive tech stage bonuses. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, and then uh, right now on first place, um, the then things change a little bit. In the late game, on first place, the best infantry will be the, Nor uh, the Nordic Union Huskarl. And then we can talk about the heavy infantry from the Swadians. We can talk about the Geronian Guard. We can talk about all of the others who receive benefits from Tech Stage. So let's 
Let's just make sure that we have this right. Nordic Husker Long on first place. Rodok Sergeant and Swadian Sergeant. Uh, Swadian uh, Heavy Infantry on second place. On third place, then I would put the Geronian Guard and the rest of them. Uh, no, Thorn. Sadly, there are no special unique spawns in this mod. Okay. And then, let's go for archers. Archer-wise, um, I'm just going to mention the strongest archer units. The Vagiers, the Vagier Marksmen, but they sadly get... Uh, outscaled in the late game because of crossbowmen and because of gunpowder units. Alright, and then uh, for crossbows. Now for crossbows, on first place we have the Rodox, of course. First place we have the Rodox. They have the motherfucking siege crossbows. These are still the strongest crossbows in the game. Uh, then we have the... Um, Swadian Sharpshooter, the Agonic Order Sharpshooter, and the Mithridian Sharpshooter on second place. They're all similar. And then on last place, we have the Zendar and the Papal State Sharpshooters, which come at level 15. Let me just show you. So the Zendar Crossbowman, level 15, and the Papal State Crossbowman, level 15. These are the weakest crossbowmen in the game. Okay. Um, did I mention all of them? Are there any other type of units that I haven't mentioned? Oh yeah, mounted archers. Mounted archers. Now, for mounted archers, um, I have to mention the Turgon Horde. Turgon Horde archers are pretty up there, very, very strong. On second place, sadly, I have to put... Just to verify, yes. Yes, on second place, I have to put the, the Serenid Camel Archers. Where the fuck are the Serenids? There you go. Uh, I have to put the Serenid Camel Archers on second place. And on third place, the Kurgid Khanate with the weakest Horse Archers. And everything is just cannon father from there. Just because uh, the Camels are better armored than the Kurgid Horse Archers. It's, it's sad, I know, how the Kurgids have fallen. Even their specialization in horse archers are not that good in Nova Ethos. Okay, now, let me talk with you guys a little bit about Tech Stage 3 and Tech Stage 6. Tech Stage 3 and 6, because at Tech Stage 3, you're going to be unlocking the 16th century units for any of the factions that are capable of increasing their tech stage. At tech stage 6, you're going to be receiving the 17th century units that will be unlocked to all of the factions. Sadly, you won't be able to see these units in the faction troop trees, so we're going to be switching out, and I'm going to be bringing up Where is that? It is it. Okay, there we go.